I took delivery of my new project bike. <coughs> it is a Twinx. I believe I overpaid it a little bit, but the guy had to leave. So, yeah, instead of buying a new one, I just choose to use a used one. It is barely used, as you can see, it comes in nearly new, uh, new, new condition. Everything's fine. So before I take the original wheel and the motor kit wheel to the bicycle shop to swap over the cassette and tires maybe, I want to make sure that the brake on the e-bike will work. As you can see I have a disc brake and I put the wheel inside already once. After that I do a test fit and later then we see us. So the first thing I observe is that the seal from the bearing is not proper pressed in. It is like killed in the process, I believe. You can call it like that. I'm not sure if I will fix it or maybe replace it, but at first I really want to take care that my brakes fit, so I do the dry assembly first. Just keep in mind that I have to fix it sooner or later. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> So the second thing I observe, it is not really a problem. Um, I believe it's even an upgrade, but uh, the screws from the kit for the disc brake, they come with a 20 Torx. So if you don't have one of these, and you don't have a shop in your rear which can supply them, uh, your weekend is busted. Well, other people go fishing, right? So when you tighten the screws from the disc, you don't want to go like tighten them at once. I just put them in, put them hand tight, and now I go crosswise. A little bit. little bit a little bit a little bit a little bit and a little bit a little bit more okay as you can see it settles already because the first one it just goes like a little bit, next one. So take care that you do it. Otherwise, the first thing is that there are tensions inside the disc which you don't want to have. And the second is that the screws may become loose. So I will go with the second pass uh, to the finish. And yeah. Then I check the clearance. Ooh, I believe today is my lucky day. Or oh, somebody actually saw the boat, what they are doing. That's great, that's totally great. As you can see, the brake fits. Oh, I'm totally happy about that because at first it looks like it wouldn't, but it did. And now a little trick. Uh, I left the adjustment screws open. So now, if I go and press the brake and centers it to the disc and then you just tighten the screws. Normally it would be good if someone would still pull the lever to be sure that it really exactly in the center. Only one person can't reach the lever. That should be good enough for the start. So here are the, uh, the adjustment screws, this one and uh, that one over there 
And now I tighten them up and look that the wheel runs freely. And after that is checked, I can go to the bike shop. Let's swap the cassette. Because otherwise, if that wouldn't have worked, I would have to change the caliper or do something else. But happily, I don't have to think about that. It fits. Yeah, lucky with that. So tighten up the screws and go to the bike shop. So I'm mounting the throttle. As you can see, it goes down like here. You just have to take care that you don't forget this little spacer. It get moved inside because otherwise you don't have the clearance between the rubber and the throttle to move freely. Just keep that in mind when you wonder what this piece is for, that it is for. So because I still have no with nut tool, I go with a good old proofed one pull the rubber under it that it doesn't damage the frame so in the future I have like one two and three mounting points which you would need to proper secure the battery pack to the frame and yeah I can you can see later when I open this box uh, under there is an aluminium plate where I drill the hole through and it will fit perfectly the frame because I did it before on the other project which is at the moment on hold and when I get the width nut tool I just make the width nuts and it should be good but for experiment and for trying and for fun that should be firstly enough. So if you have a high long uh, battery pack, please keep in mind that there is no cable relief and no rubber grommet installed. So you have to do it by your own. That's the way I solved this problem. Should be nice. Hope it works. Yeah, it should. A new day is born. I'm already activated the coffee maker and the good news is today a package arrived let's see it's from Bangkok e-bike and it contains my controller bag so I can go ahead with the bike as you can see motor is mounted battery is in <coughs> I put the throttle on, but at the moment I'm not sure. Normally I would love to keep the brake and the amateur from the gear change. But um, yeah, normally I have to put the e-brakes on. Maybe I have to investigate if there's another possibility. I heard about magnet switches or something like that, which would allow you to keep the old ones or the better ones if you have upgraded. So there's the controller. <clears throat> A whole cable care management you can only do if you know exactly where your controller sits. Otherwise, you maybe cut a cable and later you figure out that it doesn't work and it's not nice to extend them. So wiring really last. And the really last should be to put the handle bar, the handles back on the bar. Because they are sometimes hard to remove and put back. Yesterday I removed the one on the on the throttle side. Later I figured out that I mm, 
go with the brakes, with the e-brakes. So today I have the fun to remove them again, but we just, you know, learn every day. So let's This is the controller bit. Mm -hmm. okay. Looks a little bit different than I expected. Still looking where the cable, where the cables should go out of the back. Yeah, okay. Let's get started. Should put fit pretty well. Let's see. Okay. So I came up with this little adapter. It is uh, connecting to the original. Um, connectors at the controller side and to an Anderson uh, XT connector, XT60 I believe, at the other side for going to the battery pack. And I did this because I like to swap battery packs sometimes and I plan to uh, swap battery packs one time. And then I have the possibility if I stick with the Anderson, uh, with the XT connector at one side and just adjust the other side to the controller, whatever it has, yeah, then I can simply plug and play and switch between the system without cutting up wires and changing connectors. Hmm. Starting finalizing the installation. So, I installed the torsion bar and uh, as you can see at first I just zip tie it to the frame because I don't want to use the hose clamps. If I really have to, I will, but at first I will look for alternatives. Maybe there is something fancy out there, maybe you have some idea, but for the beginning all uh, looks quite good. Same goes for the other side. I tucked in the seal from the bearing a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it was deformed a little bit, so I just tried to push it in as gently as I could. And I hope it works. So now I go from this end to the controller back and tidy up the cables. And then I do the same from the front. So, see ya. So, oh, the rough build is finished, as you can see, the motor is in, the torsion bars are there, everything is looking fine, and I can power it up. Here you can see the readings. Let's switch the light on. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, very satisfied how it came out. So, this is the basic version. 
because I have to adjust some things but yeah I think it looks great um, but uh, yeah there are some some little tweaking and tinkering I want to do the first thing of course is um, you know I'm the guy who likes to flip over the bike when he works on the tires for example or on the undercarriage everything which you can better reach from the bottom and as you can see the display it sticks out so I want to mount it at a better point uh, I think I will go below below the handlebar that it can turn without hitting anything if it tips over that it doesn't touch so it's most protected as it can be uh, the second thing I want to address is I still have a provisorium down here as you can see I used the button bottle holder holes for one fixing point and uh, mounting the aluminium bracket and I put original two clamps here and later I just want to with nut it so I have two more support points that it has like three three points where it sticks and there was another thing I wanted to address oh, ah yeah. yeah at the back the torsion bar I have like a hose clamp for it but I would like to go with a more elegant solution that it doesn't look so DIY. So I will think about that. At the moment I have just zip tied it. And uh, of course I want to refit mud guards and lights, but that will like always be more option. I believe I could probably go for like this as basic version and you can add on whatever you like to add on at least we are custom so there is no no fixed rule about that um, I believe if you take a random bicycle the only thing you have to really care about is that you have enough space in the frame to fit the controller or the battery or come up with an other location for these items but I like the weight distribution like it is because in the back there is the wheel already so if you put the battery pack on top of it as some people do it will shift the weight magnificently to the rear wheel and uh, that's maybe not a good idea normally you want a balanced bike and I think this bike is pretty balanced at the moment so yeah that's the point where it is at the moment where it stands I will make videos of every detail but this is just the first rough introduction and introduction so I hope you enjoyed see you next time